Nowadays it's all about RGB, RGB fade, RGB strip, RGB front panel, RGB GPU, RGB everywhere you look. Having watched this whole thing play out, I, I thought we already reached the bottom of the barrel. Well, guess I was wrong, because here comes Akeza, who decided to put RGB on the top of their Zoho air cooler, because... Yeah. This episode is brought to you by CDKeyOffers.com. CDKeyOffers has a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of their usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. So this is another one of Akeza Soho line of products, the Akeza Soho H4. And just like the Soho AR fan we already reviewed a couple of weeks ago, I was particularly interested because this is another example of a huge step coming from Okay to okay. But before we get to the unicorn power they put in here, let's go over the specs. The Akeza Soho H4 is a mid-sized CPU air cooler being 157mm high, 120mm long and 96mm wide. The heat is transported using 4 copper direct touch heat pipes, which is probably also where the 4 from H4 comes from. In order to dissipate the heat, Akeza made use of their Soho AR RGB fans, which we already reviewed a couple weeks prior. If you haven't watched the review, you may want to watch it here. To give you a quick summary, it's a 120mm fan spinning at 2000 RPM which is able to push 52.91 CFM at 1.75mm of H2O. And although it is not the loudest fan I had, I would still consider it as being a tick too loud for my taste. The fans are mounted with the usual metal clips, though Akeza added another pair in case you want to go and run this thing with two fans though this one has to be purchased separately. Inside the box of mounting hardware we will find some of Akeza's ProGrade Plus thermal compound. In terms of compatibility, the Soho H4 is compatible with every LG1150, LGL2066, 2011 and the newest LGL1200 socket for Team Intel. For Team Red we have compatibility for the Ryzen AM4 socket. In terms of theoretical TDP rating, this cooler should be able to handle a maximum of 185 watts TDP. For the installation part, it's pretty much the standard procedure. For Intel 1200 and 1150 sockets, place the included Intel backplate in place, add the spacers, place the brackets on top and screw it down with the thumb screws. Just make sure that this little dingle is pointing upwards. From here you can simply add your cooler, screw it down with the already pre-installed screws on the side. For Ryzen CPUs we have to remove the black retention brackets, place the spacers with the brackets on top while making sure that the thing is pointing upwards and that the brackets are pointing to the inside and then screw them down with the longer AMD screws. Now everything is ready and the cooler can be screwed in. From here it's the usual procedure, place the clips into the fans, attach it to the cooler, connect the fan to the 4 pin PVM CPU fan, connect the RGB of the fan and the heatsink to the included 3 pin 5 volt RGB splitter, connect the other end of the splitter to your motherboard and boom, Unicon power. A couple of things worth mentioning before we proceed. There is no RGB controller of any sort included. If your motherboard doesn't come with a 3 pin RGB header, you will need to get an aftermarket controller or get a new board. And that RGB splitter that Kaiser is including is actually pretty future proof because once you have connected the fan and the heat spreader, you still have two spots left. And that's pretty cool if you're planning to use the cooler with two fans or if you want to go with whatever other case fan you want. On a side note, Akeza also sent us over a couple of their RGB strips and even if we will not make like a dedicated review about them, I just wanted to show off how awesome these looks and that these things pair pretty perfectly with the cooler. Okay, so let's get back to the cooler. Time for performance. We tested the Soho H4 on top of our Ryzen 3900X locked at 4.3GHz and 1.4V core. Here at 100% fan speed, the H4 managed to keep the CPU at 83 degrees C which is really not bad considering the size. 
At full blast, this little piece of unicorn power managed to beat a slightly thicker Be Quiet Pure Rock, as well as the significantly bigger Alpen Thin Broken 3, which is not bad. When it comes to noise, at a 100% fan speed, it is also significantly louder than the Brocken and the Pure Rock, but plus minus on the same level as a Arctic Freezer 50. Here are some sound comparisons. We also tested the cooler in 10% speed decrements. Over the whole spectrum, the cooler did manage to keep up a pretty good battle, reaching the unhearable zone way faster than something like a Freezer 50. If we normalize these numbers by the noise these coolers create, we can see that even though the 2000 RPM that the Akeza AR fans are yelling at in the beginning are getting quiet pretty fast, making this a surprisingly good cooler at lower noise levels. So performance as a whole is pretty impressive for such a small cooler. And to my very surprise, the noise to performance ratio of this little thing is somewhat on the same level as a Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. Not bad. Coming to the design. The cooler itself looks pretty cool with all of the black design, though you won't be able to see much of it as almost all of it is covered in RGB. Maybe you are into RGB or you are not, that's your thing, but be prepared that this is the most RGB I have ever seen of it in a single fan cooler until today. Looking at it from an unbiased mindset, they did a pretty good job at this. The RGB is seeable through these milky see-through cutouts and the Akeza logo in the center. So if you are into RGB, this may be the perfect cooler for you. But while we are now on the subject of that RGB top plate, let's go over the good and bad, because this thing has a huge design flaw. For some reason beyond my understanding, the RGB cable of the top plate exits at the bottom of the cooler. So in order to connect the cable, I would have to get it down to the motherboard, then up the VRMs and then into the back of the case, or can just route it through half of my case, and which just doesn't make sense. Why? Uh, if the cable would exit at the top, it would have to travel the same line as my fan cable. Why isn't that the case? Now, you, you can fix it by rotating the cooler, but then the logo would be turned around, so why? Funnily enough, that's exactly what they did in the presentation images on their website, but in all honesty, I will gladly spend an hour or two routing the cable somewhat clean than to look at an inverted logo for the rest of my rig's lifetime. It's, no. So please, if there is the possibility to change this for future batches of, of, of this cooler, Please do so. But other than that, the cooler is surprisingly solid. The quality is really good, it is rigid as hell, the installation is fairly easy, the performance is very much okay, and the RGB looks pretty nice. And even the packaging got a premium design going on. On a side note, I love the fan clips on this thing. Uh, normal fan clips are usually just like held in place because they are keeping the fan in place and, and, and like grabbing onto the, the heatsink. But the ones on here, however, are bent in a way that they won't immediately fall off once you remove the fan, which honestly, it just made by day. So all in all, I do believe that this is a solid cooler, a bit on the louder side and with an annoying cable, but solid purchase. On the price side, the cooler is going for around 63 euros in Europe as of writing the script, and it is not yet available on Amazon OS, but looking at the case of other product, I would guess that it would be going for around $70. That being said, I think this is a bit too expensive. It may be a pretty good cooler, but for that price I can get a Freezer 50 here in Europe. So if you are into that RGB plate at the top and you really want that unicorn power, sure knock yourself out. But if you are looking for bang for the buck, this just ain't it. The Freezer would definitely be better suited. Okay, so this was my take on the Akeza Soho H4 CPU cooler. At this point, I would like to thank Akeza for reaching out to us and sending it over. Of course, I will leave all of the manufacturer and affiliate links down in the description below. And if you haven't watched the Akeza Soho AR review, make sure to check it out. They are, they are pretty good. Okay, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.